Hello everyone. Welcome to Gift of Health uh, Weekly Wellness Chat. Uh, we're so glad to be here with you spending this time. Wednesday, the hump day evening. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you call it as hump day? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hi, Sean. Uh, yeah, give us a, a like and thumbs up or love, comment and uh, let your uh, friends and uh, family members know we'll be talking about a very important topic, uh, gut health. And, uh, uh, and it's not only important, more common too. Right? Yeah, so this yeah. Is even in the some, gut health, there are yeah. many topics, right? So, but mm -hmm. today we'll be focusing on uh, um, like how to be free from acid reflux mm -hmm. and uh, how, how not to suffer from gallstones. You uh, know, I, I, I thought like we should do a series like Dr. Gregor did this books, right? Like in you know, How Not to Die. Maybe we should do something like uh, How Not to Suffer. Yeah. <laughs> how Not to Suffer from Acid Reflux. How Not to Suffer from Gallstone. Gallstones. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And let us know where uh, you're joining us from. And for yeah. any one of you who uh, is the first time and who do not know, I'm Dr. Arjun Raipuri. This is my lovely wife, Dr. Shobha Raipuri. And uh, we are both co-founders of Gift of Health and uh, both certified lifestyle medicine doctors. Uh, where at Gift of Health, we show people how to uh, have a healthy, happy life by using food and lifestyle as medicine. You know, being free from chronic disease and uh, uh, also losing weight and having more energy, all possible with the simple diet and lifestyle changes. And that's what we... Um, uh, show and make that process actually easier for you at Gift of Health. Uh, let's see, like, uh, how is the audio and video? Okay, I see a couple of comments. Yeah, yeah. Hi, Anne and Roy. Hello. Hi, Mark. Excellent. Good. The audio is good. Great. Yeah, so if you have any uh, health-related questions that you would like us to answer, feel free to post them, especially if you have any uh, questions related to gut health, uh, feel free to share. Last week, uh, we covered uh, uh, very important uh, topics, like we talked about uh, colon diseases. We, um, we talked about uh, uh, conditions uh, like uh, diverticulosis and uh, colitis, um, then we also talked about uh, constipation and importance of fiber, various topics, uh, we, we, important topics we discussed. Um, you uh, can actually, if you missed that, you, you could watch that uh, replay on the Gift of Health page, the Facebook page, but and also you can also watch that uh, on the YouTube channel as well, Gift of Health's YouTube channel as well. So today we'll continue with uh, our discussion of other gut diseases. So we'll um, share our screen. Uh, we'll, let's see, share the screen. So you can see the screen. Okay. So uh, as we uh, shared uh, uh, again and again, like uh, basically um, many people don't realize this, that all diseases begin in the gut. And Hippocrates, who's considered father of Western medicine, he said that more than 2,500 years ago. And um, uh, we see this a lot in our, in our practice. Every uh, day in uh, my clinic, I see people with either uh, one of these complaints like bloated stomach or heartburn, nausea, vomiting, uh, constipation, diarrhea, acid reflux. And uh, this, so these are so these symptoms that are related to gut are so, so common. The gut diseases are very, very common. Most of the time, like when, uh, when you present with these uh, symptoms, um, like you get 
you undergo through tests and uh, your doctor might diagnose you with the condition. And if it is acid reflux, then you may be put on medications. Uh, you may go for more tests like uh, having a, a special x-rays of the gut or having an endoscopy, which is having a light down through the food pipe into the stomach. And you, know, you go for these tests and then um, depending upon your condition, you're, you're placed on more medications and uh, uh, with time, like these most medications that, are, that you take do not address the cause of the problem. So like the, the underlying disease is progressing, you're developing complications from that. And then um, uh, like this is the typical trajectory leading to more drugs and surgery and the disability. Whereas uh, like if you uh, understand why the disease happens and we address the cause of the problem, we can actually reverse this, uh, uh, this cycle instead of going this way, uh, no matter where you are, like you could, uh, you could be free um, or uh, if not free, even reduce the dependency on the, on the medications. Yeah, like at least halt the progression, yeah. not progress more or reverse or, or get better. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so uh, to understand the gut problems, it is very, very important to understand the basic anatomy of the gut. Uh, so here is, this is the, uh, the, the, the anatomy of the gut starting from the mouth. Like when you eat the food, it goes through the, uh, the mouth and then into the food pipe, then into stomach and then the small bowel and then large bowel and the rectum and the anus and we poop it out. Uh, the gallbladder and the liver and the pancreas, these, all these three are like uh, connected and um, the, 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 the tubes, the, the ducts that we call from the liver and from the pancreas open actually into the duodenum, which is the first part of the stomach. So we'll, we'll look at in a short period, like, you know, why all, you know, understanding this basic anatomy is so important. Hey, Beth, how are you? Good to see you here. So today we'll be looking at the, one of the most, most common complaints related to the gut issues, uh, gut problems. Can you guess what it is? One of the most common uh, complaints that like um, many, uh, almost like 10% of the people experience this, this symptom uh, that gets diagnosed as ga uh, gastroesophageal reflux disease. It's a fancy name for having uh, acid reflux. So acid reflux is a lifestyle uh, disease. Um, and uh, it's, it's so, so common that the, uh, the problem is like if you try to attempt uh, to fix the acid reflux with medications. It's like mopping up the floor without fixing the leaky pipes. We're not addressing the cause of the problem. You'll see shortly why. Like here, by the end of this talk, this is what um, each one of you to understand and you know take away is this. These are the five important things that you should know about acid reflux. Acid reflux is a curable, reversible disease. Number two, Acid reflux is due to poor diet and lifestyle choices. Nine, more than 95% of the cases. A small percentage of cases actually have some organic disease. We'll come to that, like you know, how uh, those things can be uh, addressed, like if you actually have some organic disease. But otherwise, in more than 95% of the cases, like for example, uh, this week I did many procedures and uh, I had this patient, um, young uh, fellow like who's in 40s and uh, he was having persistent acid reflux. And I did the endoscopy and didn't find much like when we did the endoscopy, the, this, the food pipe is fine, the stomach is okay. And then uh, uh, the, the, the thing is in his history, there are so many red flags. Like um, this, uh, he was smoking one pack of cigarettes per day. 
many people don't realize like you know how smoking is connected to acid reflux mm-hmm. he's drinking 5 to 6 cups of coffee a day mm-hmm. and we, when we talked about the diet like you know his primary diet is like meats and also like coffee many people don't realize like how coffee causes acid reflux yeah so we'll look into how these things are related uh so here mark is uh, commenting like i had acid reflux every day we are in week 4 of the gift of health program i've had it only once it was very mild so that's mm-hmm. like uh congratulations mark that's amazing hi pauline hi vivian glad to see you all uh so poor diet and lifestyle are the leading cause of acid reflux number 3 is that medications that are commonly used to treat acid reflux they do not address the cause of the problem number 4 a plant based lifestyle can set you free from acid reflux within a matter of weeks if not even days i think it's yeah, a, just, just as mark said yeah. like i'm just in week 4 and uh, earlier i used to get acid reflux every day but it's uh, i just got once in 4 weeks and that feel like it was my so like this is a testament like how quickly plant based lifestyle can actually help you with this condition mm-hmm. and uh, just like uh, mark many people all over the world are waking up to this truth taking charge of their diet and lifestyle eliminating acid reflux and finding freedom from invasive procedures hospital visits and medical bills so are you ready to learn these things like now how these things can uh, uh, how the acid reflux happens and um, uh, how you can be free from it if you know someone who could benefit from this just share this uh, video um, click a like and give a love uh, so moving on like uh, to understand acid reflux you have to understand a little bit about the anatomy of the stomach here what you are seeing on this image is uh, uh, on the on this side you have a healthy stomach uh the upper part of the stomach has uh, uh a sphincter uh, it's a one way valve which lets allows the food come from the food pipe into the stomach but uh the food cannot go back usually like if the valve that the sphincter is working well the food shouldn't be able, uh, shouldn't be able to go back up into the esophagus but if the valve is not working well then it's very easy for the here in this picture like you see the sphincter is open and the reflux like the 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 stomach contents and the food is able to reflux into the esophagus so it is normal it is normal for our stomach like your stomach my stomach our stomach to make acid it's normal the type of acid it's called um hydrochloric acid and it's normal because the acid has very important functions like it helps in the digestion of the food uh especially it dies in of the proteins it uh protects us from infections like many bacteria come into our environment through food so the acid uh hydrochloric acid made by the stomach it neutralizes the this this bacteria so it decreases the chance of getting infection and the acid also helps in the absorption of important minerals such as iron uh and the b12 so and other minerals as well so Uh, the hydrochloric acid has important functions but the problem is if there is too much acid if there is too much uh, acid in the stomach uh, that acid does one of three things it either eats the lining of the stomach causing gastritis which is inflammation of the stomach or causing ulcers like breakdown of the stomach wall causing ulcers or the acid can go up north into the esophagus causing acid reflux or some of that stomach acid can actually go into the intestines uh, and then some people have like cramping and bloating and diarrhea so one of the common reason for irritable bowels is actually excess stomach acid so basically you are saying if the lower esophageal sphincter the sphincter between the stomach and the esophagus is not working properly or if there is too much acid production in the stomach or if the acid is staying in the stomach for too long so those are the potential causes for acid reflux yes so like what may cause the lower esophageal sphincter to open or not work properly 
so that, that's what we'll be looking at like in to to understand that we have to uh, look at like you know what are the drivers of hydrochloric acid production so here if you can see the more meat you eat this is this may be very surprising for uh, many of you like if you uh, the number one driver of acid production in the stomach can you guess no we have given it away on the slide but <laughs> it's the meat and the more animal protein you eat, the more acid stomach has to make. Like it's obvious, as you said, like acid is needed to digest the protein. Yes. So the more uh, protein from the meat, so it's uh, more acid production. Yes. And it's not the same, uh, same with the plant-based protein. So mm -hmm. the more animal protein we take, the more acid stomach has to make. So how that happens is like the more meats we e uh, you eat, the more production of uh, uh, like uh, uh, gastrin. Gastrin is the hormone which stimulates the production of hydrochloric acid. So meats, you take, you, we take in meats and meats uh, stimulate the, the stomach wall to produce more gastrin and more gastrin means more hydrochloric acid. Why, why does uh, uh, like the meat production increase, uh, why does the meat intake increase acid production? Because uh, acid is needed for the digestion of the meat. See, to digest the meat, we need this enzyme called pepsin. So pepsin converts protein into peptides, which are small, tiny particles of protein. But for this pepsin, the enzyme to be active, you have to have hydrochloric acid. Got it? So without, the, without uh, having enough acid in the stomach, you can't have the enzyme to, that is needed to break down the, the meat. So the more meat you eat, the more acid stomach has to make. So th these are only two mechanisms. One is uh, the, the meat intake promotes the, like the uh, release of gastrin. The meat intake also uh, promotes the... Uh, production of uh, another uh, chemical called histamine. Histamine also increases the acid production. So moving on, the other factor Shova mentioned is uh, how fast the stomach empties also matters. Like if you look at, um, if the food sits in the stomach for too long, then it's very easy for the acid to come back up, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Whereas if the food stays the right amount and then goes into the intestine, then there is not much in the stomach for it to reflux. So the stomach emptying, how well the stomach empties is also a very important. So stomach emptying depends upon how much protein we eat. So the more protein we eat, the longer it takes for the food to digest. Can you guess like out of, uh, if you were to eat a meal of a, a, a salad and the fruit along with some beans versus uh, you had a meal of uh, chicken and cheese uh, with some fries on the side. Which food takes longer time? Is it the first meal or the second meal? You can type in the comments. Is this the first meal or the second meal? Which meal stays in the stomach for longer time? Generally, says, why are we set to eat more protein or veggies every day? Yes, Geraldine, like, you know, um, it's a misconception. Yeah. Why are we asked to eat more protein? Yeah, it's like, it's a it's, um, lack of education that, you know. Yeah, so as Pauline said, it's meat, meat and cheese. Yes, second, second one, one, yeah. So yeah. You, got, you got this right, Connie, Beth, Pauline, like, you know, the second meal that, that where it, there is meat and cheese and fries. Like, why? Because the amount of protein, the amount of fat in it, the more protein we take, like it takes a longer time to digest chicken and meat, uh, like chicken or turkey or beef or pork or ham, like or moose. It takes longer time to digest these foods when compared to um, things yeah. like the... Uh, yeah, digesting rice, beans, mm -hmm. or like any, any green, grains, fruits, or vegetables. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, the other thing is uh, the, the more fat in the diet, 
it actually stimulates the release of a hormone called CCK, which is cholecystokinin from the gallbladder, from, from the small bowel, which slows down the, the, the stomach. So uh, if, and the people don't realize that even if you don't add any oil in cooking the meat, there is a lot of fat in the meat itself. Even the chicken breast, have you noticed that when you cook chicken breast, you take the skin off and you throw the chicken breast in the oven. Do you see that you, you get so many drippings of oil in the oven? Even like you didn't put any oil and you, didn't, you took the skin off. That is because the way the animal stores fat is, is, is it, it stores in between muscle fibers. You can clean what's on the top, but you cannot, you cannot clean the fat that is being stored by the, an, the, the animals in the muscle. So there is uh, quite a bit of cholesterol and saturated fat, even in the lean meats. So one problem is the amount of protein and the other problem is the amount of fat. These two factors, along with increased acid, like uh, the, these three factors, they slow down the stomach emptying. So Geraldine is saying, I say to my hubby, why don't you stay with veggies we are having for supper? But yeah, see, the thing is, is it is it, these things take some time. Like Geraldine is saying, like, why is that uh, always, you know, people prefer meat uh, first before uh, veggies? Because that's, these are the cultural habits yeah. most of the time. Not only that, in, it also depends how it is cooked. Like when you cook meat, you flavor it, you season it. Like if I just give you that slab of meat, that won't be so palatable. You, you won't even like the smell of it or the look of it. But what do you do to, to the meat? You flavor it, you add spices, you add ketchup, you add mustard or all the spices. But when it comes to veggies, what do you do? You just boil them and put it on the side. So do you think like people would love to just have that steamed vegetable? So it's it also depends like how we are cooking things and like how they are being presented. Yeah, and the other thing is, uh, Geraldine, it's not just about eating veggies. Veggies itself is not gonna fill you, right? So you have to focus on getting whole grains, beans, uh, fruits and vegetables, like using these, um, you can make different soups and stews and stir fries and sandwiches. Uh, wraps and bowls, so uh, snacks and sweets. So you have to make different things. If you take out the, if you are used to eating meat and you take out the meat and just what are you left with? And you, if you don't know how to do, you uh, you feel like you're starved because you're just eating salads um, or, or boiled vegetables. Yeah. So like uh, I, this actually happened uh, today. Uh, one of the patients said, "Oh, I tried uh, your diet." Uh, before and I tried it for two weeks uh, and I was starved. I was feeling like I was starved. Then I asked him like, you know, what, what were you eating? Oh, I took the meat on and I, I was eating a lot of vegetables and oh, okay. So, uh, but vegetables are not gonna fill you in, right? Like vegetables, they, they just, they, your body digests them so fast. So were you eating like enough whole grains and beans? And the answer was like, he was not eating much of whole grains, beans, potatoes, sweet potatoes, like squashes and corn. You got to eat starch, like in, either in the form of beans or in the form of whole grains or in the form of potatoes to keep you full and comfortable. And as Shoba said, what do you do to that meat to make it tasty? What is meat? Meat is nothing but dead, rotten, decaying flesh. And if you can make that dead, rotting, decaying flesh tasty by putting uh, you know, salt and barbecue so uh, sauces or like you know, ketchup or Montreal steak spice, you could you know, put taste on fruits and vegetables and whole grains and, 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 and beans, like whole grains and beans and, and potatoes. You could cook them with, uh, with similar spices to enjoy different flavors and tastes and fruits are naturally tasty. You don't need to do much for them. Vegetables can be made very tasty if you know how to prepare. So it is a learning process. And that's what actually we, you know, we, our uh, passion is to 
show you how to make it happen at gift of health um like uh, uh, uh today we're talking about acid reflux and uh, it um it reminds me of like a, a kim like mm -hmm. a kim um uh, like she used to have acid reflux and she struggled with like diabetes and uh high cholesterol high blood pressure though all those things improved but one of the things that improved so quickly was acid reflux within few days uh and if you go to giftafal.org and just go to the 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 blog or the success stories you can see many um like uh, inspiring uh, journeys or the stories of uh, real people just like you who have changed their diet and then uh said goodbye to acid reflux does it help you Excellent. Okay, let's move on. So it's uh, other than the the um, uh, the meat, it's and the dairy products. We also need to spend a minute on dairy products, not just the meat. Also, uh, the the cheese, the butter. uh these all like these are fats and they slow down the gut emptying and they also relax the the sphincter the the lower esophageal sphincter which makes it easy for the acid to come up so what are the other lifestyle factors uh i'm just looking at here like pauline says uh, yes mine is gone like <laughs> are you referring to acid reflux so what are the lifestyle factors uh also influence uh, acid reflux one is smoking uh smoking how does it cost like um uh, every time you smoke the nicotine and other substances in that cigarette they stimulate the production of acid so smoking causes a stress response in the stomach and it causes like a uh what we call vasoconstriction vasoconstriction is like it it decreases the compromise the blood supply the stomach goes into a uh, stress and that releases the like the, there is more production of acid then if you are smoking 20 cigarettes a day or 10 cigarettes a day that is like each cigarette think of each cigarette is like a drug and you taking like 10 times that drug or 20 times to um to boost the acid production uh and this excess acid it it burns the lining of the stomach and the acid can come up north and cause a burning of the food pipe it's if you're smoking 10 to 20 cigarettes a day most of the uh, of you also have habit to have uh, coffee uh drink coffee like three or four five cups like as i was saying uh, one of my patient recently uh, i was talking to her was drinking five to six cups of coffee and smoking 20 20 cigarettes a day every time you drink coffee the co the caffeine a uh, coffee itself it, it relaxes the esophageal sphincter uh increases the it makes it easy for the acid to come up um and as if you are putting like creamer like a double double triple triple many people do mm -hmm. that itself like uh, also uh increases acid production and uh, slows down the the stomach emptying uh alcohol is a no brainer like uh, when you drink alcohol you experience bloating it increases acid production it relaxes the sphincter there is nothing good about alcohol when it comes to stomach hot and spicy foods um hot and spicy foods like many people say oh when i eat hot and spicy foods like i get acid reflux mm -hmm. but it's not just the the hotness and the spices it is what you put this uh these spices on like you know if you are making uh fries and you you are uh, putting a lot of uh, spices and making it hot then uh, you may develop acid reflux from that or if you are making like a barbecue chicken wings like fried and then putting these spices then you may feel that heat and the spices causing acid reflux but we have seen people like who went away from eating this kind of hot foods went to plant based eating acid reflux went away and then mm, they are able to enjoy hot and spicy plant based foods they have no problem 
So it's not just the the hot and spicy uh, spices or the like the the chili that causes the acid reflux. It's what you put these on. But when you're starting out, if you are having acid reflux, we suggest stay away from like you know decrease the 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 amount of chili that you use. But gradually, like when you transition to plant-based eating, you can enjoy hot and spicy foods as well. Excess citrus foods and uh, uh, tomato-based sauces can increase acid reflux. Again, this is what we have seen and observed is that this is more common in people who are eating a diet based on meats, dairy products, and cheeses. But it is less common in, uh, are rare in people who eat plant-based. The other lifestyle factor is like, it's not just what you eat, but also uh, when you eat, right? Like uh, if you're eating late at night, and uh, overeating all the time, then that also increases acid reflux. How are we doing so far? Good, so one common uh, uh, thing that you'll see that uh, you might, some of you might have been these kind of medications. If you have acid reflux, or one of your family members has acid reflux, then, uh, uh, you maybe uh, were put on these medications like Tums or uh, things like Zantac or Rolaids. Uh, I mean, these, some of these are over counter. Uh, I've seen people like who go to their, uh, you know, go for having a burger or a hot dog or fries, and then they're on, on the other hand they're chewing these Rolaids and like in this uh, and Tums, like uh, not making the connection. Hey, you're eating these foods and then you're getting acid reflux. Uh, instead of eat the foods and take these 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 uh, drugs, you could you know find the other alternatives where you don't have to uh, get the acid reflux, you don't have to suffer, and then even avoid taking these medications. And and sometimes when uh, we are prescribed these medications, we continue taking them. So let's say even when we don't have acid reflux on a daily basis, even when we are not experiencing symptoms, since we have been prescribed these medications. We just continue taking them and refilling them too. Yeah, and these medications like uh, Nexium or uh, Losec or the common, what we call uh, technical name is called PPI or the proton pump inhibitors, the common class of medications that are used for treating acid reflux, these have side effects, mm -hmm. right? Side effects and some of the side effects uh, are, are, are concerning like, uh, one is like you know, the concern of like weakening the bones and lowering the platelets. And um, there is also some concern that there is increase of uh, infections. Uh, in, and uh, some studies even showing that there is a um, overall, like if you take proton pump inhibitors, like the PPIs for a longer term basis, then it may even uh, increase the risk of getting uh, dementia and also shorten the, the lifespan as well. Uh, and also it decreases the immune system as well. Yes. Mm -hmm. So on the other conven uh, inconvenience is that you have to take this medication every day. So compliance is an issue. Cost is an issue, right? You have yeah, to pay so, for it. Mm -hmm. So uh, there are many concerns is it, with like intake of this medication. So our goal. Is yeah. So Geraldine is saying I hear dementia. Yes. So that is one of the complications, Geraldine. Yes. It's like a. Uh, I mean, we're not saying the proton pump inhibitors cause dementia, but there are studies to show that intake of proton pump inhibitors, the PPIs may increase the risk of getting dementia as well. So there are, as you can see, there are concerns associated with these medications. And uh, the other thing is that the, none of these medications, do they address the cause of the problem? No, as you have seen, it's the diet, the poor diet and lifestyle are the cause, are what are responsible for the acid reflux, but taking this medication doesn't address the cause of the problem. Uh, so our goal for you is not just to manage your uh, acid reflux, but just get rid of it, stop it forever. Like, so our uh, mantra at Gift of Health is like, uh, if you can eradicate, why medicate? So eradicate it, like stop it, get rid of it, rather than just medicating yourself every day. You good with that? 
are you ready to just either prevent if you don't have it right now just prevent it like continue eating plant based and uh, maintain a healthy lifestyle so that like you don't have to uh, suffer, suffer from this acid reflux right if you are already uh, if you have acid reflux or if you know um, any friends and family members who have this then definitely like uh, encourage them to look into gift of health resources share this video with them um, and uh, share the gift of health website like there are over 250 recipes there free recipes that and inspiring stories as well good excellent so should move on to let us know if you have any questions on as reflux or uh, other uh, gut related problems as well like so we'll look at uh, other common uh, uh, health gut related health conditions as well so moving on like the other common uh, complaint that i see uh, in the, my clinic is people presenting with the uh, gallstones gallstones are stones in the gallbladder uh, these stones they cause so much trouble for many people uh, i mean we are not designed to have stones in the gallbladder but it's it's the foods the type of foods that we eat that uh, uh, produce uh, gallstones do you know what these gallstones are made up of can you guess like uh these gallstones like stones of the gallbladder they come in different shapes these are these are this is the gallbladder and the stones um like the gallbladder is packed full of stones here can you guess like what these stones are made up of it's actually cholesterol so all the butter cheese turkey or any meat cheese and fish and mm -hmm. oils that you eat right all the the types of fats so so basically like any any animal product uh, has cholesterol so all that extra uh, excess cholesterol uh, especially like when it is in the gallbladder so like all all that excess cholesterol like is forming lumps yes especially if you if your diet has more saturated fat then the liver liver makes more cholesterol the there is more cholesterol in the bile bile is the fluid that is made by the liver the gallbladder basically stores the bile and the while the bile is being stored all the cholesterol is just sitting there it forms like clumps and forms into stones so these cholesterol stones they come in like different uh, uh, shapes and different colors um you know and the problem with this stone these gallbladder stones is that here you see the, the this is a healthy gallbladder like there is uh, no, no stones and here you have someone with the uh, uh, stones in the gallbladder and this gall stone is actually causing blockage of the of the bile duct and when this happens it's it's very painful because the gallbladder is trying to squeeze the bile into the gut and um especially you need the bile that you need the bile that is made by the gallbladder uh, to help with the digestion of the uh digestion of the, the fatty fat. foods fatty foods so for example like when let's say if you have oil in your hands and if you wash it with water it doesn't go away but when you apply soap then the oil comes off easily so basically what bile is doing is it's actually helping the digestion of the fat so it makes the fat soluble so that it can be easily digested and the the bile is made by the liver it is stored in the gallbladder and the gallbladder releases it any time you eat fatty food so you might have heard and seen people like uh, they typically the the attacks of the gallbladder they they present as pain on the right side going to the back and the shoulder and uh, these typically happen after uh, fatty meals yeah after eating the deep fried fatty meal yeah the deep fried or even like meats or fries and chips and uh, uh, barbecue uh, wings uh, or even around the holiday cheese season cheese and yeah cheese and butter like the more of these foods you eat the more gallbladder attacks you get mm -hmm. so uh, 
these come in different shapes. Here is uh, like a, a call bladder. Uh, I'm cutting it open. No. See, once we open it, it's a bile and the stone is stuck there. Opening it a bit more to release the stones. Just want to show you the stones here. So this is outside the patient's body, right? Like so, um, you can see how these many stones are in the gallbladder. Just washing the stones off so that you can see. And all these stones are nothing but, what are these stones made up of? Cholesterol, right? 95% of the stones in the gallbladder are actually made up of cholesterol. I know uh, this doesn't look so pleasant or <laughs> they look so gory. I mean, but sometimes we cannot see what's happening inside our body. So like when, when we see uh, the same gallbladder outside and having stones, I know like it doesn't look pleasant. But that's what is happening inside our body. Yeah, that's how the stones in the gallbladder look. And these stones that uh, are, are simply uh, clumps of cholesterol, like all the butter, cheese, eggs, uh, meats that we eat. The, the more you eat, the more more uh, 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 stones in the gallbladder. The, the good news is this, like um, uh, most people, when they have stones in the gallbladder, what, what, do you, what do you hear? They get their gallbladder out. Mm -hmm. Right, but it's not yeah. it's not always yeah. necessary. Yeah, they think the problem is in gallbladder, so maybe if we can get it out, uh, we can get rid of the pain. Yeah, mm -hmm. but the thing is, uh, the problem is not with the the gallbladder. The problem is with the food. What what food and lifestyle choices you're making? Yes, there are stones in the gallbladder. Just because there are stones in the gallbladder doesn't mean that the gallbladder needs to come out. The gallbladder needs to <laughs> like. Just I remember yesterday, like where uh, yeah, one of them is saying, I came with the gallbladder, I'm going out with the gallbladder. Yeah. <laughs> Instead of getting it out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. You come with it into this world. You go with, <laughs> it. Go with it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, are fish and meat equally harmful? Yes. Like uh, when it comes to gallbladder, uh, in even intake of fish, like uh, because fish is. Nothing but um, uh, it's what is it made up of? It's like made up of fat and uh, protein and cholesterol. Uh, yeah, so I, it's not. Like, I, I would say like um, fish is little less harmful than the meat, but it's just like a smoking a filtered cigarette versus a cigarette. So, uh, but when you compare fish to the plant-based foods, fish is more harmful. Yeah. And also like whether you think of fish or meat or butter or chicken, like one uh, rule of thumb is all of these, like what, like they are animal based foods and any animal based foods have cholesterol. So like, and saturated fat, yeah, it's not just it's, a cholesterol, it's saturated fat, but the more saturated fat you take in, the, mm -hmm. the more risk of uh, heart disease, more risk of diabetes, more gallstones. Um, so uh, Daniel is saying I have laryngo Daniel. pharyngeal reflux. Yeah. So Daniel, like, we, uh, have you been watching from the beginning? Like, we talked quite a bit about acid reflux, and uh, uh, many in some people, unfortunately, um, the acid reflux is uh, uh, can present as laryngo pharyngeal reflux. Uh, so uh, catch up with the like if you haven't start from the beginning like watch this replay after it is done and you'll you'll find it quite helpful yeah yeah i, was, boiled, I, I okay. was actually laughing boiled fish is it hard for some people to give up yes it, see, the thing is, <laughs> is, maybe is is boiled fish okay <laughs> no see the thing is, is if, if uh, we understand that if it is something that you grew up with uh it is hard to give up mm -hmm. but the thing is if you find tasty alternatives that love you back that you enjoy the taste like right now the problem for many of you like is if you take away the meat or if you take away the fish or if you take away the chicken you have nothing to replace with mm -hmm. 
But if you learn, if you take your time and learn some uh, like uh, uh, entrees, like learn from, uh, l- learn some main course meals, like some soups and stews and stir fries and you know sandwiches and wraps and bowls, like different kinds of uh, healthy, tasty foods. You know, you could have potatoes and pop, like pizza. Uh, pasta, even lasagna, like all these things can be made plant-based and you don't, uh, you don't have to ever uh, like uh, experience the stink of fish, like you know how stinky the fish is, the, the, the meat um, and still. Uh, yeah. Like even when it comes to fish dis- uh, dishes, whether you're making fish cakes and so everything can be plantified. So that, that's good news. So like whatever uh, meat based or fish based dishes. Yeah, like, you know, meatballs, like you could, if you enjoy meat, you can make like meatballs, you can make like different kinds of burgers and uh, all these things are possible. Like, but the thing is, is there is a learning curve. It's not like if you, um, it's not something that you just gonna dive in and like, you know, start doing right away. It takes some time to transition like, um, to get rid of uh, the meat and the dairy products? I, I would say it's a skill that can be developed mm-hmm. and, and that can be learned. So yeah. that that's what like most of the Gift of Health members also do through the six-week course where they're developing the skills of uh, plantifying their favorites and like how they can make all these dishes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so our next, uh, like, you know, you could certainly do this on your own, the transitioning. Mm-hmm. Uh, but if you need help, like uh, we could, we, we, we can could make actually it, fast track the process. Yeah, we can make the process easy for you, the transition mm-hmm. process easy for you so that what takes like six months for you, we could show you in like, in you know, a four weeks, like we have a six week course, our students are in uh, fourth week right now, and they're already making, they've already made so many breakfasts. So many lunches and suppers, and they they share those their creations and uh, like with us, and it's just inspiring and amazing the stuff, all the stuff that they have created in just last four weeks. So, and this could be possible for you, like within four to six weeks, you could just transition with confidence um, and with our help. Like so, uh, our uh, next six week program, the Gift of Health program, will be in the new year. Uh, it, it will be in the in the January. Uh, we invite you to take a look. There is the, the link is in the comments. And uh, if you are just you know struggling or if you're thinking about transitioning and how to transition, this is this is for you. Um, and also, yeah, share it with your friends and family as well. Good, excellent. So uh, we'll, uh, we'll continue, like I wanted to uh, end this with like one other common uh, condition that uh, I see with uh, many people like who uh, uh, take, uh, uh, who eat meat and uh, other animal products. Like one of the uh, thing that I see in my practice is um, getting called from, from the emergency room to uh, to see people like who just had a meal of uh, meat and the meat got stuck in their uh, food pipe or esophagus. Like uh, here you have, uh, like what you're seeing is, is the inside of esophagus, the food pipe, and here is a piece of uh, uh, meat that is uh, stuck in the food pipe. And I have, uh, personally, I have taken out uh, pieces of steak, uh, turkey, beef, pork, uh, fish bones, chicken, chicken. bones, uh, all, all kinds of this, like here is a, a piece of uh, meat and here is a piece of fish bone that I took out from the food pipe. Here is a, a chicken bone that I took out from the esophagus. So uh, this is very common actually, like uh, it's more common than what, you, what many people uh, know and think um, that, uh, blockage of the food pipe with the, the meat and the bones is, is a common problem. Then the other common problem that is way underlooked is the health of our teeth. Uh, how many of you have seen like that many people in our culture these days is very common to accept 
loss of teeth and going for dentures as as you age but it doesn't have to be like if you if you have if your diet is uh, poor uh, like if you're eating quite a bit of uh, sugar and meats and you have acid reflux uh, it's it's very uh, like these these kind of habits are very damaging to the teeth and um, by uh, young age like into your 40s and 50s and 60s then you'll be losing your teeth and maybe even uh, requiring uh, artificial teeth so uh, this is another uh, reason why you should certainly look into uh, eating like a whole food plant based uh, diet uh, it's not a diet it's a way of lifestyle like base your uh, um, meals on uh, uh, fruits and vegetables whole grains beans nuts and seeds you could make plenty of variety of foods like there could be uh, you know you, you never have to make the same thing again uh, so there is variety there is taste and uh, uh, so to summary um, for optimal gut health like you want to avoid uh, dairy products meats and eggs and uh, increase intake of whole plant foods Uh, uh avoid the processed foods and refined sugar and uh, refined grains yeah so like yeah when we are avoiding all this uh, grains and uh, uh everything so you you might be wondering then what can i eat instead so like whatever food you like it can be plantified so whether it is meat based dishes or any of your favorite food like mac and cheese like mm-hmm. you know maybe people like mac and cheese people people like pastas lasagnas mm-hmm. and pizzas and burgers all this thing can be made uh daniel is asking can you explain why drinking sparkling water is not recommended for acid reflux uh, sparkling water is a carbonated water right there is carbon dioxide in the water it's when you take that sparkling water all that there is extra a gas that gets released in the stomach and that extra gas in the stomach it, it causes the stomach to bloat and when the stomach is like getting distended or stretched it can open up the the lower esophageal sphincter making it easy for the acid to come up so uh, you could take small amounts if it's not bothering you it's fine but the most important thing uh, to to start focusing on is uh, your your uh, diet like you know what are you eating for breakfast lunch and supper uh, certainly uh, limiting the intake of coffee and um, uh, maintaining a healthy body weight is also important uh, um, if you have excess uh, body weight that itself puts pressure on the stomach and that excess pressure on the stomach itself can keep the lower esophageal sphincter like open so it makes it easy for the acid to come up so uh, another reason uh, to maintain a healthy body weight So let us know if you have any questions. Hi, uh, Pearl. I see you're joining now. Like we just covered uh, two important uh, uh, health topics. One uh, is acid reflux, and other one is gallstones. Like basically, how not to suffer from acid reflux and gallstones. you can take a look at the replay so we will uh, wrap this up and um, uh, let us know if you have any questions we will be happy to answer them now or like uh, even the, the upcoming weeks like next week we have uh, under uh, like we'll be on the series um uh, we'll continue the the series of uh, gut health topic uh, so which will be the final uh session on the gut health we'll be talking about uh, irritable bowels which is very very common uh and uh, other uh, uh, gut related uh, health issues the common ones and um yeah oh you're welcome mark
Bye, okay, Ellen. So bye, we'll bye, Jolene. You're welcome. Week. Thank you. Thanks for joining. Join us next week and uh, keep uh, keep working on uh, getting healthier and healthier. Uh, <laughs> take care. Bye, bye.